We just saw how a function like body in MATLAB can quickly and easily create a frequency response plot directly from the dynamic equations of or the input-output transfer functions of our system. Uh, the key as control engineers is not just to be able to create those plots. The important thing is having a good understanding of what those magnitude and phase traces are telling us about our system behavior and stability. Uh, body plots were originally developed by Dr. Hendrik Body, hence the name, uh, with, uh, while he was working for Bell Labs in the 1930s, just before World War II. This guy was a brilliant controls engineer, and he came up with what at the time was the groundbreaking idea of using asymptotic magnitude and phase plots to facilitate stability analysis and control system design in the frequency domain. Remember that this was way before computers, so I guess engineers at the time were stuck with slide rulers, uh, using them to manually calculate all those logarithms. Uh, the ideas behind the, asymp the asymptotic approach are quite simple, but extremely powerful. And they will help us gain a better understanding of how those plots are actually built. The simplest construct I can start with is a pure integrator, which corresponds to 1 over s in the Laplace domain. If we replace s by j omega, our function g becomes a, a vector on the negative imaginary axis. Negative because we're multiplying the numerator and the denominator by the square root of minus 1. This vector has a constant phase angle of minus 90 degrees and a magnitude of 1 over omega. Notice that as the frequency omega goes from 0 to infinity, the magnitude of our vector will go from infinity to 0. In, term of, in terms of dBs, the log of a fraction is the log of the numerator, in this case 1, minus the log of the denominator, in this case omega. Uh, we know that log of 1 is 0, so that part goes away. And the uh, magnitude trace of the body plot becomes just a line because we are plotting it on a horizontal axis that represents log of omega. Notice that this line has a slope of minus 20 dBs per unit, which is a frequency decade in this case. The phase remains constant at minus 90 degrees and is independent of the frequency. Conversely, if we look at a pure differentiator, which corresponds to just s in the Laplace domain, because omega is in the numerator now, in this case the magnitude will be a line going up with a slope of positive 20 dBs per decade, and the phase will be a constant positive 90 degrees. Now let's move on to a first order construct like a single pole with a time constant of tau. Once again, if we want to look at the frequency response, we need to replace s by j omega. The magnitude of that vector will be log of 1, which goes to 0, minus 20 times the log of the magnitude of the denominator. Uh, on first impression, this looks like it is going to be very hard to draw. But if you think of that expression on an asymptotic manner and break the diagram in two parts, when the frequency is well below the pole, in this case below 1 over tau radians per second, tau multiplied by omega will become very small, and the, the number 1 will dominate the expression. Note that this makes uh, g become close to 1 over 1, which will be a vector on the real axis, meaning that the phase will be very close to 0, and the log of its magnitude will be very close to 0 too. When the frequency is way higher than the pole, tau omega will become dominant, in which case g becomes close to a negative, purely imaginary vector, yeah? meaning that the phase will be close to minus 90 degrees, and the log of the magnitude will be close to a straight line rolling off at minus 20 dBs per decade and crossing 0, where omega equals to 1 over tau. Notice that the actual body plot deviates very little from our asymptotic approximation. Obviously, we are going to see the biggest difference around the cutoff value of 1 over tau. From the plot, we can also see that the phase angle takes about two decades to shift 90 degrees. So if you want a little more accuracy on the angle, we can assume that the phase drops 
45 degrees per decade before and after the value of a pole. Using the same approach, we can see that a single zero will result in a similar trace. Only in this case, because the zero is in the numerator, the phase will shift positive 90 degrees, and the magnitude slope will be positive 20 dBs per decade. At this point, I would like to give you a feel for how all of this works in a more interactive fashion. Uh, what we are looking at here is the body diagram for a constant transfer function of 1. Our system g over here is equal to 1. This means log of 1, which is 0 dB magnitude and 0 degrees of phase, because it's a positive real number. Uh, let's see what happens when I add a pole, let's say close to 1 radian per second. We can see how the magnitude plot immediately breaks down with a negative 20 dBs per decade and the phase shifts to negative 90 degrees. If I move the pole to the right or to the left, making it faster or slower, all I'm doing is shifting that cutoff frequency. Let's erase that pole and bring in a zero. As expected, now we see a positive break in the magnitude and a plus 90 in the phase. Notice that the magnitude of a pure zero goes to infinity at high frequencies. This is pretty undesirable behavior because, amongst other bad things, it will more than likely be amplifying all kinds of high-frequency noise on our system. Normally, if you have a pure differentiator or a zero, it will always be accompanied by at least a pole somewhere up the frequency range to bring that gain trace down. Because of superposition of the graphs, remember that multiplication becomes sums on a logarithmic scale, the plus 20 dB slope of the zero gets cancelled by the minus 20 dB slope of the pole. Similarly with the phase, the plus 90 degrees of the zero gets pulled down by the minus 90 degrees of the pole. If I actually wanted some attenuation at the higher frequencies, all I need to do is add another pole close to the first one, and now the roll-off rate becomes minus 20 dBs per decade. If you want a sharper drop at higher frequencies, just add another pole and boom, minus 40 dBs per decade. Anyways, I think you would agree that this interactive design tool is way better than slide rules and graph paper. I don't know about you, but uh, I like to believe that Dr. Body, who, by the way, spent many years teaching controls just across the river at Harvard, would have truly loved MATLAB.